something I've been wanting to tell y'all all morning and he just fixed it up for me. The, the level of uh, your increase is to be able to hear God's voice, right? Um, for every single believer, how you tune your life towards God will enable you um, to increase and grow in, in your life. And, and so, you know, um, when, when God tells us something and it doesn't necessarily fit into our agenda or our particular life, we kind of say, I got a word from the Lord, but the obedience doesn't line up. And, and what he said to me earlier this morning was incomplete obedience is disobedience. But I, I want to tell you that the body of Christ has been anointed, period, period, right? The body of Christ has been anointed, period. And it is the gifting of the anointing that it makes us talented, right? But, but, but the spirit of holiness is something completely than the anointing. And it's the spirit of holiness that releases judgment in your life. And it's the spirit of holiness that releases judgment. But I'm not talking about judgment like wrath from God. I'm talking about judgment as discernment to live in a particular manner and to live within the power of the anointing, right? Because you have many people who are anointed and gifted to do something, but their life doesn't necessarily line up. You hear all kinds of scandals about the pulpit. You hear about all kinds of scandals about ministers of music. <laughs> Not that we have one, not that we have one, but I was diverting the, 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 the you know. <laughs> but you hear all about all these different things that go on in the church, and it's because the person has been gifted and anointed to do something about God, but holiness is our responsibility. And so because holiness is our responsibility, it releases the spirit of judgment. It releases the spirit of discernment and able, enabling us to discern between that which is good and that which is evil, that which is comfortable and uncomfortable. And what you have to realize is that holiness always makes the flesh uncomfortable. Amen. It always makes the flesh uncomfortable. And so if, you, if your life is lined up with fleshly things and you're comfortable in them, but you have a word from the Lord, it's just your responsibility to be obedient to what the word says and not your comfort level because it's outside of the comfort level where your increase your true increase is at but if you choose comfort over the word you decrease and you live amongst a lie instead of the truth of the word the bible says that grace and truth came by jesus christ and so because grace and truth comes by jesus christ you have to choose ye this day who you will serve. Do you serve yourself and your comfort level or do you serve the Lord? And so, and so uh, you may be gifted and anointed to do whatever it is. You, you know, I, I can remember when I was a little boy and they used to come and say, Donna, tell that boy to be quiet. He's always running his mouth. He just talks all the time. Well, not knowing that that was a gift to run my mouth, Amen. right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Speak, Lord, speak, Lord. <laughs> yeah, you know I can sing. I'm about to try out for the praise and worship team. Can I try out? Are you going to deny me? Oh, I, gotta, I, I get on by default? No. Look, see, you see how I see? I told you. I told you. She's like the evil stepsister. I told you. She's like the evil stepsister. She just told me no, right? Why not? If I can't get on, we're going back to CDs now. That's... <laughs> oh, well, we're going back to playing CDs. Psych. No, no I can't. In, the, in, in alone, in the car. I wouldn't do that to y'all. It's your worst of experience, too. And Pastor cannot hold a tune. You can believe that. But um, we, we, we've been talking about um, uh, speak to your heart, right? 
and 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 I and I want to and I want to just divert a little bit and because 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 you may get misconstrued by this message to say okay all I have to do is say right all I have to do is say and it'll work and along with saying there has to be something behind it and 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 of course I've been teaching you that faith has to be behind what you say belief has to be behind what you say but also there's some other things that have to be behind there's some other levels of this thing and if there's not if there's not another level behind it I'm doing you uh, injustice not teaching you everything that goes along with this claiming this declaring this speaking things into existence right Um, because if you don't believe it one it never happened but along with it comes some power right and you have to be able to tap into something other than yourself in order for you to see joy in order for you to see peace because because in order for you to see healing in order for you to see love in order for you to see gentleness and kindness all the fruits of the spirit there has to be something along it right you just can't be a church sitter you just can't come and sit in a pew you just can't say okay now i believe even though it's the faith that 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 is the uh, uh, the catalyst of what's produced in our life but along with it comes some other things right and so, so our foundational scripture has been Mark 11, 22 through 24, and Jesus is coming back from cursing the fig tree, and him and the disciples are together, and they're walking through, and, and Jesus says, and Peter says, how did that church, that, 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 church, that, that uh, tree wither the way it did? And Jesus said, listen, listen, listen. Replying said to him, have faith in God constantly. See, now, now, now. When you, when you decide, when you decide to take a stance for God, everything in your life goes haywire, right? Everything is designed in this world to come against faith. And so because we live in a three-dimensional world, right? Because we live in a three-dimensional world, we're in a three-dimensional space. And in this three-dimensional space, the devil has rule. And so because the devil has rule, He's, but what Jesus' tip is, no matter what you see, no matter what you experience, no matter what you go through, right, can be consistent. Consistency is a force, right? If consistency is a force, that tells me that if I got an ice pick this big and I got an iceberg this, the size of this room, if I can stay consistent, I can chop away at that thing every single day, Right? So, so but the Bible tells us to have faith of a mustard seed, right? We know the mustard seed fits on the tip of your, your finger. It's the smallest thing that there is. But see, when Jesus taught this, he understood agriculture. So when Jesus taught this, he knew that one mustard seed would turn into many mustard plants, right? And what, what mustard does in a garden, it will destroy everything that is in the garden with it. It's deadly to whatever else is there. So when Jesus tells me to have the faith of the mustard seed, he's saying, listen, I'm giving you something that if it's cultivated, it'll be deadly to everything that is not that it's not like it. Right. And so because it's deadly to everything that is not like it, this position of being consistent and constantly having faith in God makes sure that everything that is not like God is destroyed in my life. Right now, this is the kicker. There's some things that you might grow a barrier around away from the mustard so the mustard can't get to it. It's not that the mustard can't destroy. It's not that the faith can't destroy this thing, but you put a hedge of protection around that which you desire. No, Lord, listen, I want to turn all this over to you, but, you know, chocolate cake, cheesecake, I'll, I'm going to put a barrier around this. You can't have that. I'm going to put a barrier around X, Y, and Z. I'm going to put a barrier. And, and I, don't have to, I don't have to name them. You, you, you know exactly what they are. But it's this inconsistency that causes stagnation in your life. Because, because if consistency is a force then inconsistency can be a force also, right? And so because inconsistency is a force, when you don't feel like it or you desire something else other than what God has placed in your life, you allow that thing to now 
keep growing in your life and keep uh, being established in your life when God has given you something that should destroy this. The reason why it's still there is not because God hasn't dealt with it. It's because you haven't dealt with it, right? And so when you don't deal with a thing and if you don't handle a thing, especially when, listen, especially, especially when you know it should not be there. That, that, that to me is saying, God, I hear you, right? God, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I, I like this a little bit more than the, than the position and the, the uh, situation that you're presenting me. And so because this, I'm going to be God over this area of my life. Well, everything that you are God over in your life has the potential now to destroy that which God has established. Because God is a gentleman, and so because he is a gentleman, and he will not force his will on your will, right? Because, because he did not declare us robots, he declared us living souls, spirits, right? And so because of that, we have the right to choose whether we are obedient to him or not. And so within this, this obedience, we have the ability to disregard God or regard him, right? And the same anointing that I was talking about that is a gift, the, anoint, the anointing makes you successful, right? You can be successful in the world and do something because God has gifted you, but you might not be significant. And I'd rather be significant than successful because I'm significant to God and not necessarily successful to the world. Because the world may claim me as successful, but God may claim me as insignificant. And if God claims me as ins insignificant, my success will run out, but my significance, the significance to God will never cease. And so I'd rather be significant and successful, right, according to God, right, because he told Joshua, be courageous and, and fear not, meditate on the word day and night, right, do not let this word depart out of your mouth, and then you'll make your way prosperous and have good success. So, so this tells me that there's a stance that I have to take, there's a positioning that I have to take, and there's a mindset that I have to take in order for me to go from just success to success and significance. And that's in the word, that's in the will of God, and that's in faith. So with those things, now holiness takes place. And once holiness takes place, now I get this spirit of discernment. And within the spirit of discernment, now, now when things are coming my way that seem right, right? that seem right, I'm able to discern the fact that this thing is not of God. It does not line up with God. It's slivering its way in my life. And so because it's slivering its way in my life, I can now have the power through holiness, not the anointing, but through holiness to deny myself because this thing is coming to attack me. So this consistency, this constant faith in God is so important. Because, because if you don't maintain this, if you don't maintain this, this is where the enemy creeps in. And he whispers. Check this out. We were watching a commercial today. Um, this morning. We wasn't even watching it. We were getting dressed. And it was talking about shingles virus. And it said one out of every three persons who's had the chicken pox will get shingles. Will you be one? Right? Now let's look at this. It spoke right in my ear. I spoke right out of my mouth. No. I won't be. Out loud. Someone, if someone would have walked by the room or whatever, they'd have thought I was crazy. But see, when, 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 when suggestions come, because see, they're playing on fear, right? Fear is not of God. And so because they're playing on fear, faith is of God. Faith tells me I'll never be sick. I'll never be sick. Nothing will ever attack my body. See, I shut down the loopholes. And so because I shut down the loopholes, when the suggestion comes, I don't get fear. I apply faith. It's a consistent mindset. Consistent mindset. Constantly being in the will of God, in his wheelhouse, in his mindset. We have the mind of Christ. And so when the world begins to speak other than what Christ speaks, 
You got to have some kind of word inside of you that enables you to say, I have the faith of God and I'm consistent in it. And so because I'm consistent in it, nothing can come my way. It, it's this perpetual, it's this perpetual power that continues to operate in the will of God. See, holiness puts you in a place of perpetual, perpetual, it puts you in a perpetual position, right? Because if you just operate by anointing and you let lascivious come in, lasciviousness, lasciviousness is a life with no restraints. You don't put any re restraints on your life, but pastor said, if I just believe in God, I'll be saved. And so because I believe in God, I'm saved, but I don't want to put any extra work in because there's some things on this lane that I'm still desiring. And so because I'm desiring this, I'm not putting myself in a perpetual position of power. I'm putting myself in a perpetual position of anointing. And the perpetual position of anointing will save my soul, but it won't succeed. My, it won't make my life be significant and successful. You see what I'm saying? Because, because you're dancing in the world, you're dancing at night and trying to worship God during the day. And God says, man, you're either going to be hot or cold. You can't be the one because see what the lukewarm water was in that place was it was unprofitable it was of no you no use he need, either needed hot water or he needed cold water it wasn't whether you chose hot or cold it was like warm water wasn't significant for the place so he says listen I need you either to be cold or I need you to be hot it wasn't whether see see most people look at that scripture as hot and cold as well if you're hot then you, you know you're hot for God you're in a good place but if you're cold it wasn't that what it was is is that you have to either be significant in one or two places. But if you try to be lukewarm, you're insignificant. I can't use you. See, the water, cold water was for drinking. The, the hot water was for bathing. The, the lukewarm water was of no, no, no significance, right? And so, 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 so if I'm going to be significant, I cannot straddle the fence. I've got to choose. I've got to choose where I want to be, Right? And if, if, if my anointing is a cold anointing, or if my anointing is a hot anointing, I want to be significant wherever God places me. But I have to believe God for what he anointed me to do and not anyone else. And a lot of times, we, because, because we look at what other people are doing, instead of looking at what God has called us to do, we think our significance is in what they do and not what God has called us to do. See, you have to spend more time trying to find out what God wants you to do instead of just aimlessly running around trying to do whatever. See, see, it's better to be a Martha in the church and sit at the feet of Jesus than be a Mary who doesn't listen to the word but wants to look busy, look anointed, and look appointed. Come on now. Come on. Jesus. God is good. <laughs> so Jesus says truly I tell you whoever says to this mountain be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart but believes that what he says will take place it will be done for this reason I am telling you whatever you ask for, for in prayer believe trust and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. A few months ago, I told you that faith means to have a title deed mentality. If you go to God in prayer, right, and you ask, right, whatever you ask and not doubt in your heart, you can have what you say. Simple and plain, right? Simple and plain. Does that mean that you can go live any kind of way you want to live? Well, I'm not gonna lose, you're not going to lose your salvation, right? So why can't I go do what I want to do? I believe. I've prayed. I'm saved. Why can't I just go do what I want to do? Huh? Got to be obedient. Well, I am. I believe in Jesus. I believe. Huh? You're not convinced? Oh, you're on the fence? Okay. Okay. All right. So... All week, God has been dealing with me for some stuff, right? My thinking, my soul, mind, will, intellect, imagination, and heart, right? My soul will determine my level of success. As a man thinketh, right? That's what the scripture says, right? As a man thinketh, 
So is he, right? So, so when you go into prayer and asking God, most of the time, we're focused on God, right? It's the coming out of prayer where focus needs to maintain. And a lot of times, focus doesn't mean, but listen, y'all don't have to raise your hand, I'll do it. But some of us have been in jail, right? Some of us have been in jail. Some of us have made some major plans in jail, right? And, and it's almost like a, like a because, because if you ever get focused, right, it's almost like a think tank. You begin to jot out life, you begin to make plans, you, be, you begin to do all these things, right? As soon as you step outside of the prison, you know in your heart that you have all these plans. But now all these outside variables begin to attack your plan. It looks like an attack, it's just real situation, right? And so because it's real situation, you make these plans for your living, but as soon as you step outside the gate, you didn't negate that you need toothpaste, paper towels, uh, 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 deodorant. You didn't negate that, I mean, you didn't assess that you needed food. You didn't do any of those things. You just made these grandiose plans to do whatever you do. So it's the same way when you go into prayer. When you go into prayer, you make these grand plans and you make these assessments, but when you come out, Everything that the devil has designed is these outside variables that come to attack the plan of God. And as they come to attack the plan of God, you got to make assessment for the enemy because if you don't make assessment for the enemy and you're not vigilant. See, I'm not telling you to worry about him. I'm telling you to be alert, right? Because the Bible says that we, we not, we, we're not uh, unwise to his methods. We know his methods. And so because we know his method, methods, you got to know that he is designing a contrary situation for that which you are praying for. And so because of this, the way that he gets you is in your thinking. Because if he can get into your thinking, he can get into your mouth. And if he can get into your mouth, he can get into back into the atmosphere. And it's within the atmosphere that you cause life or death, right? Right? and eat the fruit thereof. So, so Proverbs 22, 7 says, listen, consent, and submit. So when you hear this word listen, it's not just necessarily telling you, okay, I hear you, pastor. No, are you listening? It's a difference. I hear you. No, are you listening? And have you submitted to the word, right? To the words of the wise. Because see, listen, listen, listen. Let, 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 me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. She thinks that she's what I'm the wisest person in the room. Do y'all agree? Also, oh, to tell you, Pastor, he's unwise. See how you'll go? What is wisdom? What is wisdom? Proper use of knowledge. I'm using the knowledge properly. My wife would tell you that I'm perfect, I don't do anything wrong. Oh, lying pastor. <laughs> On Sunday, communion Sunday, from the pulpit. Oh, lying pastor. But it says, listen, consent and submit to the words of the wise and apply your mind to my knowledge. Listen, God gives the best counsel. And so because God gives the best counsel, what he's telling you is, he says that I've placed my words in wisdom, in the wisdom of people, right? And so because I've placed my words in the wisdom of people, you have to now apply your mind to my knowledge. See, check this out. I've prayed, I've prayed this. I said, God, bring every single broken and beat up soul that is assigned to my life to this church now. But at the same time, send the talented and the wise. And the reason why is because I know that I'm limited in my knowledge and I need talented and wise people around me to do that which God has called me to do. If I thought that I was able to do it all by myself, then I would be a fool. But I'm not a fool. I understand that I'm limited in my abilities and in my understanding. And so because of that, 
I need you to send that which you've assigned me to do, but also, please, Lord, within my prayer, send the talented and the wise. So it's the talented and the wise that are to govern, right, and minister to so other people can have knowledge, so knowledge can turn into wisdom, and wisdom turn into knowledge because it, 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 it appropriates itself. It begins to propagate itself, excuse me. It begins to bounce from mind to soul to soul to soul, and next thing you know, the world is now inundated with the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. See, 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 you can't tell me that I've heard from God, but live contrary to God, right? Because it's either that you are telling the truth and you're thwarting at the things of God, or you're lying and you don't know God at all. So I'd rather be in a place of ignorance than to know God and not live like God. Because it says it's a fearful thing to be caught in the hand of a living God. And I, listen, listen, one of the things that bothers me the most in life is when she's upset with me, and it's, and it's on a daily basis. Uh, I may have become numb to it, but I don't like when she's upset with me, right? And she's, she's, she's always giving me instructions. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> babe, you just can't do that. You can't talk like that. Oh, my God, you said that again? Uh, I mean, it's just on and on, right? And I don't like her to be upset with me, right? How, have you ever been chastised by God? Has God ever leaned on you about something? And then once he leans on you, you still don't do nothing about it? What makes you think from this point? Listen, had you, had you, have you ever told your kids, clean your room up? And then on Monday, on Wednesday, you come back. You still ain't clean this room up? Friday comes. Daddy, can I, uh, can I have, can I go? Oh, is your room clean? We can't, we can't get past to what you want until we can get past what I've, I've, the precedent that I set, right? And so because I've set this precedent as the father, we can't get past to what you want to do until what's done what I want to do. Well, how much more do you think God does that? We want to go into the next easy thing in our life, but God doesn't want us to go into the next easy thing until we do something about the significant things in our life. Because if we don't do anything about the significant things, he wants us to be successful, right? And so because he wants us to be successful, we have to do something about the significant things because then there is no success in the future because we didn't do the things that were up front. So the things that we desire, right, the things that we want, it says whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. Well, along with your desire needs to become some obedience because along with that, see, see, then when, listen, listen, then when you, when as a child, when you know the room's clean, you went over and aboard, you did the dishes, you know she's coming home, you know she's coming home, you know she's coming home. Look, look, no, I can't let, I can't let that one out. I can't, I cannot out, no. Whew. Anyway, when you're in the house and you've been given the instructions and everyone else is in the house with you, but you got a place of power, right? Oh, she'll be home in 45. Listen, I need you, 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 you. <laughs> Go. Do this, do that, do this, do that, do that. Y'all got it? Great. She come home, no beefing, no nothing. But see, you can't do that. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. What's over man's soul is that too shall he also reap. I may be able to get over it with that with her, but I can never get over that with God, right? right? And the reason why I can't get over with God is because he's Jehovah Roi. He is the one who sees. And so because he sees, he knows all things. He's omniscient. He's the all-wise God. And so because he's the all-wise God, what makes we, us think that we can pull the wool over God's eyes by being incomplete in our obedience, right? And so one of the other things that came to me this week was that faith can, contains more than I can obtain, right? And so because faith can obtain more than I, I can obtain, I have to choose. 
I have to choose now. Do I live a life of faith, right? Faith is perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. But most of us live our life through sensory mechanisms. What we see, what we taste, what we, what we, what we know, right? And, and so these things affect our emotional balance. It affects our emotional standpoints. And so I have to allow something greater to affect me on the inside so I can have some greater success and significance in the world on the outside. Because if I don't, if I don't allow this thing, this gift of faith that has been given, listen, faith has been given and supplied in the earth by God. And so because faith has been supplied in the earth by God, I have to allow faith to contain more than I obtain because if it's, listen, if it's about what Jamal gets, li li listen, man, listen, let me tell you something. This ministry is more than I can ever believe for. The fact that God took a crook like me and enables me to preach and minister and serve and lead and guide his precious people is phenomenal. It, listen, listen. I couldn't even understand how to start doing this. And so that tells me that me, listen, the day, listen, the day that I said I do to God contained all the last 12 years of my life. The last 12 years of my life, listen, listen to this. Sunday school teacher, deacon, minister, on the flip side, drug dealer, felon, drug abuser, liar, thief, crook, womanizer, bachelor's degree, master's degree, pursuit of doctor's degree, pastor, teacher, counselor. Man, this is crazy because, because just 12 years ago, you wouldn't be seeking me out for godly information. Now, some of you, y'all don't even talk to God no more. <laughs> I need y'all to talk to God first, then come to me. Right? Because your faith contains more than you can obtain. And if that's the case, then your faith can contain more than I can obtain. Don't think that my faith is greater than your faith because we all started with the same thing. You just got to cultivate that which God has placed in you in order for you to know what I know, right? And so, and so because of that, and so because of that, I tried to find a scripture to everything that he gave me this week, right? It said, but Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go enter, go enter into peace and freedom from all the distresses that are experienced as the result of sin. See, this, this faithful place that we have is a significant place for us to go hide from the ailments of life. Listen, even the things that we love and like that we know don't line up with God, this is the place for us to run to escape our own selves because most of our trouble has been designed by us and no outside entities. Amen. See, when it comes to speaking out of your mouth, there's so many emotions, right? You, 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 you'll go into prayer and you're disappointed in yourself and you think that God's disappointed in you. So you, 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 you're not making any declarations. And, 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 and if these disappointments last long enough, they birth depression. And then you don't even know how to pray. Then you don't even know where to start, right? And so, and so because you look at yourself as a disappointment, and God's looking at you like his son, right? You perceive that God is seeing you the way that you see, you see yourself. But listen, he says he will again have compassion on us, he will subdue and tread underfoot our iniquities. See, 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 iniquities are not just, just one moment of sin. Iniquities are, are, are lifestyles of sin. Iniquities are rivers of sin. It's being caught up in something, and you don't know how to get out of it, right? He said he will subdue, right? If you turn this thing over to him, whatever it is. See, drug dealing, 
drug dealing was my iniquity, right? Which I thought, but drug dealing wasn't iniquity, it was the love of money that was my iniquity. It was, it was low self-esteem that was my sin, right? Because, because if I keep digging deeper to find the root of this thing, it might not even have been the love of money, it was the way I perceived myself compared to everyone else. And so because I was running around in the wrong world and I did not have what the other people had, I had to go obtain it because I viewed myself in their eyes. So love, low self-esteem then birthed the love of money. The love of money then birthed uh, uh, drug dealing, which then birthed a jail cell, which then birthed felonies. You see what I'm saying? The fruit just kept being produced because I never dealt with the root of the iniquity. So if we turn it over to God, he says, listen, whatever it is that you have a problem with, I will subdue it, I will strangle it, and I will tread it under my foot, and, you, and I will cast all your sins into the depths of the sea, in the sea of forgetfulness. If he doesn't remember it, why do I got to remember it? The only reason why I talk about my past it's because I'm delivered, and it's the great, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so because of that, I'm going to talk about it until I'm blue in the face, because I'm delivered. Amen. <laughs> as far as the east from the west, so as he removed our transgressions from us. So the next one was, once you believe God, there's a part of you that believes the contrary. Make up your mind who you will be obedient to. One will prosper and the other is a lie. Listen, when God speaks, your time of obedience to one voice is majorly important. Listen, you have to have the mindset that as soon as he speaks and you hear his voice, you got to make up your mind that I'm going to listen to God. Because immediately, the second voice is set to come. Amen. The second voice is either your place of doubt in you, right? Or an outside spirit of doubt that comes to attack it. And so because of this, all you got to do is look at Adam and Eve. God gave Adam a word and told him not to do something, right? Immediately, the second voice could not get to Adam, so he went to Eve. Eve now comes back, pillow talk. You got men, men. You got to watch this pillow talk. You got to watch the pillow talk. That's where they get us. That's where they get, babe. You know what we should do? What, babe? You know, I think we should go eat from that tree. Why do you think that? Well, it looked good, didn't it? It, it did look good, and it's probably really good to eat. Don't you think we should go and eat from it? And Adam said, well, you know what God said. She said, yeah, but that other spirit said, we won't die if we eat from this tree. Adam said, all right, in the morning. She says, she just want me to take you to dinner, Adam. <laughs> And you go eat, and you do not listen to the first voice. And it's the second voice. Once you believe God, there's a part of you that believes the contrary. Make up your mind who you will serve. Choose ye this day who you serve. We do not need more or a greater anointing. We need less doubts. Rest in the finished work of Christ. Whom God put forward before the eyes of all as a mercy seat and propitiation by his blood, the cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation to be received. See, check this out. This, this propitiation, right? This is, this is, when I learned this, man, it, it blew my mind, right? Propitiation. I come into Christ, and I'm saved, right? He just said that he throw all my, seeds, my sins in the sea of forgetfulness, right? I do something that's contrary to God, which equates to sin. But I'm the righteousness of God. By faith, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Not only for Abraham's sake, but it's imputed for all those who do believe. And so because of that, Abraham's the father of, of, of many nations, right, of, the, of all of us. 
So now, because Abraham believed, I got this righteous spot, right? But I start doing stuff that's not right, right? The propitiation is the eraser. It's just a constant covering for my infirmities, for my weaknesses. Atonement means to cover. Propitiation is the cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of atonement, reconciliation to be received. Check this out. Reconciliation tells me that me and God, me and God was not getting along. There was enmity between me and God. The Bible says that God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. He used Jesus as a catalyst for the ministry of reconciliation. And so now, so now I have this place with God, but I keep messing up. The propitiation comes and erases it. But check this out. Now that I'm telling you there's an atonement for your sin, still doesn't negate the, the anointing or the holiness. It doesn't mean that you continue in sin that grace may abound. It doesn't mean that you continue in sin that the atonement may keep erasing my sins. It's telling me now I have to do something significant about my life so I can have success and significance. Right, right. Come on, Beth. See, because, because it says his blood, the cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation to, to be received through faith. So this faith tells me, see, faith in one of the simplest terms is knowing the word and applying the word. Knowing the word and applying the word. Knowing the word and applying the word. Listen, the word of God was never to be contemplated. Listen, the voice of God is not for you to contemplate. It's not. It's the voice of God and the word of God is for you to be obedient to it. And so now, if you enter into a thing knowingly, knowing that this is not of God, but it fits your life. What, what, what are you saying to God? Those of you who have kids, they knowingly did something that you know you told them not to do. And we so quick to, di di didn't I tell you not to? Talk them all the way down. I, I, I won't do it no more. But then you turn around. Ooh, it's tight, but it's right. <laughs> this was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, in his foreknowledge, in him holding off wrath, he had passed over and ignored former sins without punishment. David said, blessed, oh my God. Blessed is the man who God will not punish, uh, punish the man for sins, paraphrase. But what David was saying was that, that you found favor in my life and you're not punishing me for the things that I've done. If that's the case, where's the honor? Where's the honor towards God? Or do you just take advantage of this position, right? True advantage of the position is holiness. The true, taking true advantage of the position is not doing whatever you want to do. The true advantage is putting yourself in a place of holiness. I pray, I worship, I stop lying, only in church on Sunday. <laughs> I live by the fruits of the Spirit. I ask to be filled with the best gifts of God. I'm obedient to the things of God. I stay in his wheelhouse. The, and then, then, now, speak to your heart. You'll be able to speak from your heart. Amen. See, see, the beginning of the sermon a couple weeks ago was to change the way your heart perceived things so those things could be regurgitated. Well, today what I'm telling you is, is that if you place the right things in your heart, you'll be able to speak from your, from your heart. And when you speak from this soulless place, things must move. Things. Listen, listen. There's this word called debar, word things. When you speak, things must be created. 
you were recreated in the image of God and in his likeness. We know that the world was framed by the word of God and that the word created everything that it was. If you want something created, then you have to speak it. But if you speak it, make sure that the spirit of holiness is thriving in your life. Now, now, I'm not telling you who may be struggling with something not to speak. I'm telling you to keep speaking, but then keep lining up, right? Don't you stop speaking, because that's what the enemy wants you to do. See, the enemy right now be, might be trying to trick you and telling you, because, because, see, your guilt and your shame is not how God sees you. My disappointments is not how God sees me. I just gave you that. Don't let the enemy be slick and tell you not to speak because you think that your life is not lining up the way God wants you to. Listen, let me tell you something. Are you in church today? Yeah. That's the first step towards being exactly what God wants you to be. Yeah. When you leave, it's your responsibility to take the next step. Man, don't, 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 don't let the, he, he thinks he's slick. He ain't slicker than me. He think he is. See, see, man, let me put you on to something. He knew he had to go to Eve because we would have never been, you know. <laughs> but we couldn't be so slick because she got us. <laughs> Amen. So, 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 you know, this, this is major, man. Your life is major. How you live is major. It's not just what you say, but it's how you live behind it. Listen, listen. A dollar with no gold behind it ain't worth nothing but the tree that it came off of. The words out of your mouth ain't nothing without faith and a lifestyle behind it. Your declarations should line up with your faith, but your faith should put you in a position of power, true power in your life. We've been declaring body of Christ and haven't been seen. And the devil wants you to believe that this ain't real. And you go to church because you're scared to go to hell. Well, we've dealt with that. We're going to heaven. We know it. We believe it. And so because of that, now, now let's just deal with our life, man. Let's deal with our life. There's power in this walk. You know, I was sitting in the barbershop yesterday, and um, one of my friends asked me, it's because uh, uh, how, how's the new church? And I said, man, it's good. He said, how's life? I said, man, it's phenomenal, man. I, I said, I, I, I can't complain at all, right? And uh, he said, uh, you, you still work at the car lot? I said, nah, I don't, I don't work at the car lot no more. I said, but you know what? Uh, a fool would walk away from nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month to go be a pastor or someone who just fell in love with Jesus. Hey. Hey. Listen, listen, listen. Nine, ten thousand dollars a month. That's your income for years. And you ain't even making a thousand dollars a month, well, a week, right? That, that seems foolish, right? You got cars and house. How many people in our house? Ten people in our house. Wife. She's look. She said cars and house. You got a wife, all right? <laughs> She was the only child, so you know her mindset. She she thinks she's supposed to get the world spoiled. He said, but you have something that that money probably couldn't buy. I said, man, I have so much joy and so much peace. And so I was willing to give up one of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, finances, to trust in the Lord. And he has preserved, sustained, 
made me successful and significant. What you sacrifice for Christ, what you crucify in your life will elevate your living. You must be willing to bear some kind of cross for Jesus. And it's in this bearing that God will be pleased, man. I'm telling you, God will be pleased and he will make sure that your life is something you would have never obtained on your own. Amen? Amen. Come on, give God praise. Yeah, God is good. He's been good to me, man. Now, I'm not telling y'all to leave your job. Believe me, I'm not telling you to do that. You better believe God. Because you don't know, you don't know uh, the, 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 the six weeks walking across that parking lot She, babe, just come on, just quit. Just, just come. Then you catch a car deal and you make $1,000 just like that, right? You get to the end of the month and, you, and you, you look at the check and it's like, shh. Pay all the bills and, listen, pay all the bills. It's still. <laughs> Shopping and food and. You know, you know, you know, you know, I eat bacon, right? You got, you got, you got $3.99 bacon. And you got that $10 bacon, that boar's head, right? Me and her was in the grocery store the other day, and she walked by me, and I walked up to that bacon, and I was, dang. <laughs> that, 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 ain't, that ain't in the budget right now. Is there's some sacrifices, but money can't buy what this soul has has that has received. It cannot buy, and I trust in the Lord, man, and He does exactly. He is a promise keeping God. Listen, listen. If 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 you're unsaved, and you do not know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins, listen. I don't care what anyone has ever told you about Jesus. I want you to listen to me today. And I'm not telling you that they're wrong. I just want you to wipe your slate clean for one second and just hear me, okay? Don't allow past teachings, don't allow any of this stuff to get in the way of what I'm about to say. The grace of God, the grace of God, the blood of Jesus Christ was shed and the grace of God was given for everything that we've ever done wrong and will do. Do you think that Jesus has not located, that God has not located you on the map of life? So we can't hide from him. We know exactly, he knows exactly what we have done. The day that I walked in the church, I had two open felonies. I had coke dripping out of my nose and smoke coming out of my ears. And I went to Jesus without this understanding and continued to get high, continued to lie. But I knew there was something inside of me that needed something greater in me to save me. And so what I'm telling you is, I don't care what you've done, I don't care what you plan on doing, I don't care what you've touched or where you've been. If you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and you are unsaved, you did not get to this understanding on your own. God deals out the measure of faith And he is the one that he has elected you for salvation. And if you are unsaved and want to be saved, just slip your finger up for me right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. That's the greatest thing in the world right here, boy. This is the greatest thing. So. So, so, you you can put it down, you can put it down, you can put it down. So, uh, the Bible says that if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, 
and you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Do you believe that Jesus existed? You do. Do you believe that he went to the cross? Yes. Say it with conviction. You know, but listen, everyone who's watching you right now has been in this position right here. Do you believe that he died? Do you believe that he was resurrected? Listen, let me tell you something. You have been elected by God from the foundation of the earth. He chose you. The Bible says you did not choose me, but I chose you on a danger that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. And whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he shall give it to you. So we just going to make a declaration and a confession of faith. And you are going to walk right into the kingdom of God. Okay? Lord, I thank you. I thank you for choosing me. I thank you for snatching me out of darkness. I believe in your son. I thank you that he lives. I thank you, Lord, now that I've confessed my sins to you. And I've turned from my wicked ways. I thank you for receiving my soul. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Yeah! Yeah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Unsaved, come on. It ain't hard. 8 to 80. 8 to 80. I don't care. If you're five years old and understand this, I, I would not care. I'd question it, but I, I don't care. It's not for me to judge. It's for me to point to the way of salvation. I point, I point you to Jesus. Let him convict you and deal with your life. Anybody else? Anybody need a church home? Anybody need a church home? That's it. Jihad, boy. Hey, boy. You ain't gonna keep messing with me every Sunday. We're gonna strap you up to a I'm gonna bring some duct tape in here. And I'm gonna make the deacons tape you to the wall right before salvation on Sunday so you can't get saved every Sunday, child. You're gonna be like one of them lights on the wall, right? We're gonna put some blinking lights in your mouth, and every time you open your mouth, they just gonna blink. He said, Look, he looked. <laughs> Anybody need a church home? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's. let's.